check out this little FPV drone. I know, right? It looks like a small three inch, but uh, it's not. It's actually a five inch cinematic FPV drone. And today we're going to look into this drone and see how good it is. Let's go. So what we have here is a new frame design from two raw aerials. Um, it is called the afterburner frame and it is a five inch frame based on an X configuration. Um, before you even start building this frame, just a couple things you need to know. Uh, so when you get this frame, you will need to do some sanding as some of the arms do not fit inside the slot so good. But uh, it's not a major issue and the top slots as well need some sanding. Other than that, um, the press nuts do not come pre-installed. So you would need to install all the press nuts. You've got three on each motor arm and each corner. And then you've got two on top. And then underneath you have got six, I believe. Yep, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Once you've done all that, then you can start assembling the frame. But um, looking at the frame, you know, it's, it's a really nice design frame. I think it's going to be great for cinematic flying. Um, not so much for freestyle as it's not aimed at that sort of flying. Um, but it uh, should be a good frame and a good build. And also with the frame you get this canopy which sits on top like that. And then with regards to where everything mounts, uh, on the top of the plate you will have your main stack and flight controller uh, with your speed controller and then sandwiched in between the frame you will have your VTX mounted in here and then you have two holes here for your um, for your UFL pigtails so yeah let's get into it Quick side note before we get into the build, um, this is not going to be a complete fresh build. I'm going to be taking everything out of this ice flight frame and putting it into this frame. Um, looking at the footprints, you can see how much smaller this frame is. Uh, this is a 5 inch as well. Um, so yeah, it should be a fun build. So let's get into it. So here's a quick look of the frame with the VTX fitted in the bottom. Uh, you can see with the pigtails as well. As I said earlier that they're going to sit like that. Once they're bolted up on top of the frame, which will be perfect. And then we're going to get the flight controller fitted to the top plate. Which is here. And that will sit on the top like that. I'm sorry, like that. And we're gonna probably have to gonna take the um, camera wire off again to feed through that plate, but that's not a problem. So let's get cracking. So here's a quick close-up of how the flight controller will be mounted to the top plate of the drone um, on the other side. So this would be the top of the frame where you've got your plates like this they will slot into here it's not the correct way but and then that's how that was sit in the frame okay so 
Looking at the frame now, um, what I've actually done, I've desoldered the motors from the speed controller to make things a little easier for myself and I have mounted the motors to the arms and, and I've already mounted the VTX as well. Um, before I go any further as well, with a VTX is kind of a tricky situation so the camera wire will have to be removed for this to work so looking at the top plate here with the uh, stack mounted um, you've got a small slotted hole right by here I don't know if you can see that and uh, in order to get the camera wire through through that hole you're gonna have to disconnect the camera wire and then sort of install it while it's through the carbon which is a bit of a pain but it's not the end of the world um, but yeah and obviously the flight stack as well that sits on the top of the frame not inside the frame what most traditional drones do but uh, yeah so that mounts on top of there like that we got our pigtails will be mounted here and then we're going to wire up our motor wires on top here and then before we get to that stage we're going to sort out the VTX get the wire made up uh, the right length to go to the flight controller and disconnect the camera and go from there so here it is here is the um afterburner frame uh, all complete uh, i didn't show everything it was a jump in time um, i didn't have any time to show everything with the build but um, i try my best anyway but uh, here's the build anyway and uh, as you can see from looking at it it's pretty simple design um, you got your flight controller sitting on the top and then underneath inside sandwich inside the frame you have your vtx um, on top then we have got our gps on the top i am running the walk snail gps and i'm having good results with it i'm holding around about 16 satellites which is considerably good to be honest when you think of the antennas are sitting literally when i screw them on they are sitting right next to that gps and if you run walk snail then you know that the walk snail system is quite noisy on the first generation so um yeah i'm getting great results with that um other than that the only issue i have had with this drone in regards to tuning it and flying it was the props um i had to you find a few different props before uh, I could get a solid tune on it. Um, I was getting uh, jello in the GoPro footage, so that was causing some issues. But um, with these props, I'm using the DAL props. I uh, can't remember what the number was, but um, if you have a look at DAL props online, you'll find a, you know, a various props on there. Um, these are 5.1, 5 .5 I believe. Oh, they might be 5 inch, but I'm sure they're 5.1. <clears throat> other than that, the other changes I've done is the cowl on the top. I have printed this out of TPU. Uh, originally, it comes with a, a white cowl. Um, I didn't really like the plastic uh, cowl because they're very brittle. Um, you know, it's, it's okay, but uh, I like TPU personally. So it's more of a personal thing and you can bend it and it's never going to break so which is bonus and then with the gopro as well i uh, got my own um, case as well which sits on the top and that's about it really um, what i'll do now is i'll stick all this back on and show you what it looks like with everything on the drone but uh, yeah this is the afterburner raw two two raw aerials sorry <coughs> And if you're wondering what um, motors I'm running as well, these are the uh, Devola uh, Speedy Bee Pizza uh, motors. They're 2207, and I believe they are 1960 kV motors. And this is a really nice setup for this drone. Um, it's not the fastest, but uh, I do like these motors. They are really nice looking motors. I like the gold look on them as well. 
<clears throat> and then for the flight stack as well, I'm running the iFlight Blitz, um, the mini stack, so it fits nice and snug in that frame. So yeah, here it is. Now let's go and put the uh, rest of it on and I'll come back and show you. Here is it with the cowl on top and the GoPro 11 mini set on top and the two antennas either side. Um, so yeah, uh, looks like a nice nice little drone. Its footprint on it is tiny for a five inch. Um, the performance you get from this frame is pretty impressive because uh, all the center mass is in the middle where your traditional um, five inch drone is usually span, the weight is spanned tr across the frame, which is usually about, you know, that much bigger. So you're getting all that weight in the center of the frame, which gives you s really nice smooth and precise flying with this frame. Uh, when you go for a flip or anything like that, it, it, it rolls on a dime and tracking wise when you're flying it, uh, even for cinematic flying, which is designed for, it just sits there. Even in you know windy conditions, it holds very straight and true, um, which is great. The only minor drawbacks I found with it was the battery straps on the bottom. Uh, I find that for the batteries I'm using, they are too far apart. If they were a little bit closer, it would be better. Um, with these straps, they sit right on the end of the battery, which is not really ideal. They could have it slip off. Um, the other thing as well, that you've got to use 15 mil straps instead of 20 mil, which is understandable considering the, the amount of room you've got on this frame. Um, so you'll have to get yourself a set of 15 mil straps, which are 250 millimeter long. Um, other than that, the the other thing I would say as well is where you mount the antennas on the SMAs, there's no way to tighten the clasp because the, the canopy is sitting on top, you can't get your fingers in there to tighten it. So the solution I used for that was just grab a bit of heat shrink, stick it over and tighten it with your hands on the shaft on each side and that seems to do the trick. Um, other than that, okay, there's no other major flaws. Um, you know, building it was a little tricky, which is the worst part, to be honest. But once you got it together, it's, it's a really nice setup. Uh, it's very clean as well. You've got nothing on show, basically, um, with the flight controller in that cowl as well. It's protected from any debris or anything like that. Um, the other thing as well with the GoPro, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but that angle of the GoPro is probably the maximum I'm going to get out of it. Uh, I probably go a little bit more, but um, when you put that in consideration, that's the kind of tilt you're going to get from this drone. So if you want to go faster, you're going to struggle to get that GoPro to go straight up. Um, if you're using uh, just the GoPro stands on the bottom, I'm not sure if you're going to have that problem, but with a TPU mount, you're going to have the issues of limited angle of attack on your GoPro. Um, with the, the camera inside, you really haven't got that issue at all. You know, you've got a great range with the camera angle on the, in, the, in the frame. So it's just the GoPro is a minor drawback. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's a great frame. I uh, highly recommend it, um, yeah, so there it is. I've been giving you the worst.